Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. This presentation explains what sentence connectors are, why and how to use them, and how they affect word order. To understand how sentence connectors work, first you need to understand what a clause is. At its simplest, a clause is made up of a subject and a verb. A clause can contain other words and phrases too, such as direct objects, prepositional phrases, adverbs, and so on. But again, a clause is distinguished by the fact that it has, at minimum, a subject and a verb. In English, you can connect two clauses using what I like to call a sentence connector. The connector shows the relationship between the two clauses. The same is true in German. At the top of your screen, you see two independent clauses. You can add a connector to link the two clauses. The connector shows the relationship between the first clause and the second. Now let's look at how these connectors affect the position of the verb. Remember that the conjugated verb and any clause is typically the second element. There's a video in the playlist about standard word order if you need a refresher. If you use a connector, however, the conjugated verb may not be the second element. Some connectors, for example the connector weil, move the conjugated verb out of second position to the end of the clause. You may know these connectors as subordinating conjunctions. The connectors known as relative pronouns have the same effect on the position of the verb. That is, they move the conjugated verb out of second position to the end of the clause. A small number of connectors, called coordinating conjunctions, do nothing to the position of the verb. You can think of them as not counting for word order. There's a third group of connectors composed of adverbs and short phrases. A lot of grammar textbooks don't present these as conjunctions or connectors, but like the true conjunctions, they work to establish links between sentences and clauses, so let's just think of them in the same way. The word danach is a good example. It occupies the first position in the sentence. It doesn't move the conjugated verb to the end, so the verb simply occupies position two. The phrase alles in allem is another example. There are dozens and dozens of similar words and phrases that establish links between sentences or clauses, and they occupy position one. To summarize, the conjugated verb is typically the second element in its clause. That can change when you use connectors, so it makes sense to pay attention to whether connectors affect verb position. Some connectors take position zero. In other words, you pretty much pretend they aren't there when trying to figure out word order. Others take position one, leaving the verb in its typical second position. A third group are verb kickers, moving the conjugated verb to the end of the clause. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.